so the little bit about um, finding the manual to your brain is something I said to my now grown children often when they were growing up. And what we want is for you to find the manual to your brain so that you can make your life work the best that it can for you. So next slide. So I am Penny Askew. I own Word Summit Editing, and I am the parent of two neurodivergent adults. I developed this presentation with Dana Reidenauer, who is at the conference, so you may see them. Um, Dana is autistic and has ADHD. So what we've done here is bring together our lived experiences and ideas from other neurodivergent people and the experts we've worked with over the years um, to hopefully bring you some ideas you can use for yourself. So the top three takeaways we would like you to have from this presentation are that neurospicy brains are awesome and deserve to be honored and respected with methods that fit and not chafe, that focus flourishes in an environment that fosters growth, breaking the rules is advised, we want you to find what works for you and throw out the rest of it, or to keep it short and sweet, routines, focus, and life hacks. Next slide. Okay, so our disclaimer is that we recognize our respective privileges and we understand the importance of not assuming that everyone has similar privileges. We try to develop this through a social justice lens. We want you to know that self-diagnosis is valid. We want you to take what you can and throw out everything else. And we want you most of all to know that you are worthy no matter what you do or whether you work. Next slide. So we've got a definition of productivity here. This is from Sam Dylan Finch. I discovered uh, Sam Dylan Finch a few years ago back when Twitter was Twitter. And he defines productivity as creating the circumstances and structures that allow you to be effective and balanced as you do the work. Reframing these words can be really helpful for folks with ADHD. So rather than creating structures that serve the work, like I have to work quietly to please my boss, we can create structures that serve us. For example, I want to feel effective and meet my personal goals. It's better to create structures that serve us. Oh, so paradoxically, when we set goals that serve us rather than the work, we're usually better at getting the work done anyway. So who would have thought? And the link is in a resource guide that you will have access to from the um, conference. So I do want you to know the slides and a Google document with resources will be available to everybody. So you don't need to scramble to get these links. So we're going to talk about routines first um, because most, if not all, of the experts that I have worked with over the years with my sons have emphasized that routines help neurodivergent brains, and I can't imagine that they don't also help neurotypical brains. Um, and we want to talk about very often others affect our routines in a way that is not helpful or have enforced the routines on us despite the fact that the routine does not work well or easily for us. So we will say that routines are intentional and deliberate and purposeful. And you might even choose to use that as a mantra, intentional, deliberate, purposeful. So Merriam-Webster defines routine as a regular course of procedure, habitual or mechanical performance of an established procedure. So next slide. So we've got a clip for the Truman Show, and if it doesn't work, we'll just move on. Um, there we go.
Okay. So you all can't hear it. So it didn't work. Basically why we've got the clip playing and the link to the clip, if you want to watch it, is on the resources page that you'll have access to, um, is that if you don't remember The Truman Show, or you never sought to remember it, uh, Truman Burbank, like Burbank Studios, was adopted as an infant, and his whole life has been a reality show, but he does not know that. So all of his routines have been enforced on him, and he doesn't start questioning it until a light falls out of his sky. So we just want you to take that clip and think, oh, you know, what have I always accepted because everyone told me I should do it this way? And it's not working for me. What do I need to start questioning? So the first thing we want to talk to you about is throwing out the old rules. And to do that, let's start with when are you the most productive? Think about things like do you need to ease into your work week or do you love when Monday comes because you live with other people and they are all off at school or work and you finally have the quiet that you need? Do you work better late at night, early morning. Think about when you can get what you want done done around real life and work on the days and times that make sense to you. Think about when you are the least productive. Maybe that's the time you take time to rest or do another task or take time to feed yourself or engage in something you enjoy doing so that you can do a kind of reset for your brain. Um, you can build your habits. And I do want to say, I went to Kate Allison's talk uh, earlier, and there's a lot of overlap, and she really presented some of this in a different way, and I was envious of like, oh, I didn't do it that way because my brain didn't present it to me this way. But you can build habits. So some ideas for building habits when you go to sit down to write or to edit is to do the same physical things every time when you're going to your computer. Um, turn on your playlist. Take a quiz or write from a prompt. Um, Oh, thanks. <laughs> Open the same programs every time. So, for example, I have a folder in Chrome that is named Open Every Time Editing. So when I come in to sit down to edit, I open that folder. Yes, Ritual Masters, what John Stoneland said. Think about adjusting the lighting if you can control that. So maybe fairy lights or string lights in, in your workspace uh, or dimmer lamps that you can put on a lamp in your office or if you have an office in w the section of your house or apartment or library where you work. Um, and if you work in an office with fluorescent lights, m where my sons have gone for executive functioning support and social skills explanations, they... <clears throat> sewed a cream colored cloth that fit the fluorescent structure perfectly and velcroed that so that their clients weren't having that flicker that the fluorescent lights do. If you're in an office and can get permission to do that, think about asking for permission. And then gamify your good decisions. So you might do a say no punch card and every time you say no to something you always say yes to because you feel pressure from the outside to say yes, give yourself a, a you know, stamp that bingo card. Okay, understood. Um, So, um, yeah, the say no punch card. Okay, next slide. Think about shortcuts for speed and turn off your notifications so that you don't get distracted from the outside because your brain's going to distract you enough probably. Um, so turn off notifications on your phone and your computer. You might use the browser bookmark folder like the one I talked about in the prior slide. Um, the macros. So this is a list of macros. The Those of you who, who are authors and not editors, I would still suggest you learn a few macros. Proper nounalize, I have found helpful on almost every project I've edited. And there is, again, resources are on the, details are on the resource guide. But what proper nounalize does, 
<clears throat> is it makes a list of all the words in your manuscript that are probably proper nouns, and it f highlights the ones that you should question. So that's where you find that you have misspelled your main character's name once in your book. And most, uh, yes, most of these macros are from Paul Beverly, who is a lovely gentleman in the UK and has made, I wouldn't be surprised if it's over a thousand macros available to other editors. And so basically you just need to get past the fear of putting a macro on your computer in Word. And um, because you don't actually have to write it, you just have to figure out how to get it there. You can subscribe to add-ins, perfect it or pro writing aid. Um, or Editor's Toolkit or Grammarly. Those can all help you focus on things that they cannot do. So if, if they are pointing out that you need to work on this or that this was a mistake, things that their programs can point out, that leaves your brain free to think about things or fix things that programs cannot flag for you. And then take time at the end of the day to plan for tomorrow. And you might use a routine for the end of the day that includes writing down what you're going to do or putting it in a calendar if you use electronic calendars and maybe even shutting off your computer as part of the ritual of I am done writing, I am done editing. So um, next slide. Okay. Another way to help you accomplish what you want to that day is to consider working with others. And you can do sprints with friends, with your critique partners, your edit buddies. Uh, a lot of people just go out on social media and say, hey, does anyone want to do a 30-minute sprint or a 45-minute sprint? And then you might say, I want to get this much done in this hour and or 45 minutes or whatever you all agree to. And then you check in with each other and cheer each other that for what you did get done, what you did accomplish. You might do virtual co-working. Um, that's where you could use a paid program or Facebook or Google Meet and get together with friends where you agree to have your cameras on or off, your mic's probably off, and you just silently work together. Um, and Focusmate is an example of one paid program that will help you find a f another human to quietly work alongside so that you've got that. Um, some of our brains can't work well if we have the camera on or if the other person does, but try having the camera on and the mics off because there's something about many brains that working quietly next to somebody, and if you're doing it virtually, it's with the camera, does something in your brain that helps you focus a little better and get your quiet, deep thinking work done. Um, so let's see, Heather says, oh, there are some YouTube spaces with creative or working sprints. I didn't know about that. I do bring up YouTube for some other things later. Um, if you're working from home or in an office and you're trying to block the distractions from others out, you can try wearing headphones. Very often I put my headphones in and don't turn my music on. Other times I turn my music on because I need to, right? So do what's right for you in the moment. If you can, change which way your desk faces if you're working at a desk. Um, even if you're in an office, if you think being someplace else physically in the environment, it's worth asking your management if you can move where your desk is. Uh, wear a visor to block out some of the visuals, especially if you've got those flickering fluorescent lights. And you might also take like cereal box light cardboard and tape it to the sides of your monitor and maybe the top so that you've blocked all of the other stuff out that way. And on with that, you can even write notes to yourself to remind you of something you want or how great you are, right? So. Next slide. Okay. So we're going to start talking about focus. 
Um, the prior slide alluded to helping you focus, but the prior slides also helped you set routines to find ways that help you work. So the ideas in the prior ones were meant to help you find more ideas for when the focus or concentration is more of a struggle than usual, okay? So we'll go on to the next slide to talk about focus. Okay, it's counterintuitive, but plan your breaks. And I do want to say, only try, try only one thing at a time. There are, we're gonna throw lots of ideas out and we'll say many times, use what works for you. Try one thing at a time, not everything. I know a lot of our brains get all excited about the everything, try one thing. Um, so uh, the Pomodoro app, and there are free versions out there, or just a simple phone timer where you're working 25, 30, 45 minutes, and then you take a very short break and get back to it. Um, have a conversation with somebody, and it needs to be somebody who will only have a very, very short conversation with you so that you can get back to it. Do something physical, if possible, as you are able. A step walk, a rider's walk, yoga, chair dancing, simple stretches. Think about singing your negative thoughts aloud. There's something about doing that sometimes that gets some of that negative energy out of your body into the universe. Hopefully Mother Earth absorbs it and then you can focus on what you wanted to do. Think about doing the hard stuff first. Uh, set a timer and say you have to do this thing you don't wanna do for five minutes and you might find that you stop at the five minutes and go on to something you want to do, but you might also find that you can finish that task that you didn't want to do that has to get done. Um, another hint that's not on here that uh, my son's executive functioning coach gave us recently was to, when you make your to-do list, write down an easy win as the first thing to do. So what works for you? And it will probably be different on different days. Do you do the hard thing first or the easy win first? There are some techniques from psychology, and again, these some of these links are um, in the resources guide. Tapping, I have actually been in the grocery store getting overwhelmed and you can physically tap your body and get some of the negative tensions out. The five, four, three, two, one grounding, you've probably seen this in movies where you focus on five um, things you can see. Is it things you can see? Um, yeah, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two that you can smell, one that you can taste. That's a kind of grounding that gets you back. I mean, and sometimes I've taken my shoes off and just felt the ground. Um, I actually don't know where to get the resource guide, but I have provided it to the conference. So I think when they send a link out after, probably there will be the guide. Okay, I like sucking on hard candy. You might want to chew on jerky or gum. I grew up near the Jolly Rancher candy factory, so I buy it in big bags and then I keep it in my freezer because um, it does last that long. And in, in Texas, where I live in the summer, the humidity makes it sticky. But that is a, a an idea that my son's executive functioning coach gave us back when he had to take Psych 101 online and he found the videos boring. And what I have found is it really does work. Sucking on the hard candy when I can't concentrate helps me concentrate. Um, so I also found interesting enough that if it's just a kind of, I just can't concentrate today, any flavor works. But if I'm doing something really boring, like checking citations, I like to, to have the green apple or the cherry flavors. So play around with that kind of stimulation for yourself when you need to. You know, do you want to suck on hard candy or chew on jerky? Do you want something sour or do you want something sweet? What helps you? Okay, so next slide. We're back to Sam Dylan Finch, who was the person we who described um, productivity early on. And this, these hints are what made me notice Sam on Twitter however many years ago. And he says he uses the acronym RAN, reward yourself, have accountability, and have novelty. So for rewarding yourself, that's intrinsic motivation. Get yourself beverages or snacks that you enjoy. And if it's a really tough day, 
do a very special beverage or snack or do something fun before or after you work if it's a job that you're not wanting to do. Make some rewards for yourself. Accountability is ex extrinsic motivation that's outside help. Check in with a buddy. I have a mastermind group and one person in that group and I have similar schedules. We very often are accounting our, to, our, to each other that I need to get this done today and we will also, she, she tends to be my sprint buddy. Um, you can use an app and I'm going to have to check my notes because I don't remember um, what we were talking about for that. Um, it just may be an app maybe to track yourself. You can body double, which is very much what we talked about earlier, but this could be in person. So um, I often body double with my son in university. He lives at home and commutes. And we will body double while he does homework and I do my editing. And you can do Pomodoro sprints again with your friends. This is extrinsic motivation. Okay. And we're going to talk about dopamine boosts from making it novel, even if it's the same task you do every day. Turn your tasks into a game. So like, um, how fast can you do it? Or number your tasks that you have to get done today and then roll the dice. And if you roll a three, you do task number three first. Beat the clock. See how fast you can do it. Can you get it done before your timer goes off? As you are able, if you are able, change your position. If you're sitting and you can stand, then do so. And um, if you're standing and you can sit or stretch, do so. I noticed somebody said in Kate Allison's um, discussion that we had while she presented that they found they wrote better cozy in bed. Think about that. Throw out the rules of what the world has told you you should be doing. If sitting at a desk is not doing it for you, where where will you be able to get it done? Change the font. Um, as much fun as people make of Comic Sans font, it is a great one to try for your brain to see your book new as something new and novel or to a font that doesn't annoy you if that one really annoys you. But change the font. Play upbeat music. There's lots of free music out there and there's lots of music you own or have the license to, to play as much as you want. Find your playlists. Write your chapter in a different point of view, especially from the main character's best friend's point of view maybe. You'll learn something that is keeping you from finishing that scene if you're having trouble with it. Things like that. What is new and novel? What can you make new and novel about the task that you're doing? Okay, so next slide. Um, I think I, I am missing a slide. Okay, so helpful technology includes IceGuard. Um, that will prompt you to look up every, I think 20 minutes. Notion, a lot of us use Notion. I have not mastered Notion yet, but that also is where you can keep all sorts of information and a calendar and other things. Pomodoro, again, you can have a paid or a free version. Different time trackers, your Pandora, Pandora or YouTube music or the centered app. And if you have the paid centered app and the paid Spotify app, you can connect them. And then Todoist also. Um, is some helpful technology. Okay. Life hacks. So I hope you all chime in a lot with the life hacks because um, when I recorded this presentation, it took the full 45 minutes, and I guess doing it live, I'm nervous and talking too fast. So we do have time for you all to chime in with life hacks and things that will work as we get into them, things that you do. Okay. So feed yourself first. If you can, have pantry meals for those days when you don't have the energy to cook yourself a meal and you just want to open the pantry or cupboard door and pull something out and shove it into your body. On days when you have the energy, cook in bulk and maybe you can get friends to help you. Um, yes, Kate Allison loves making big batches of soup and freezing the extra. And um, I will say when you're freezing, if the only freezer you have is the one on top or below or next to your, you know, side by on your side by side in your refrigerator, if you can um, freeze something flat, 
in a Ziploc and freeze it flat, then they st you can stack more left to right or top to bottom. You can. I, I've had friends who put um, book ends in their freezer to have their flattened meals side by side. Um, use apps to plan, and I've got two in the resources. I use Plan to Eat, and the only reason I don't highly recommend it is because of its price, but it is really, really good, and I probably save more, a lot more in food costs and food not wasted, in meals eaten, in not having to go to a fast food restaurant and pay for that, um, than the, the fee, the annual subscription fee. Um, and then Cozy has a free version, and those are both, again, in the resource guide. Think about grocery delivery. Even if you have to pay to have it delivered, it might be better for you, and you might end up spending the same because you don't have uh, impulse buys. My old next door neighbor, um, my old next door neighbor pointed out that the uh, delivery fee we, we had to pay. I actually, five million years ago, lived in a neighborhood that was a test for delivery. I mean, way, years ago, ages, back when you faxed in your thing. And she talked about she was spending the same amount at the grocery store because she was not impulse buying, and she was getting exactly what was on her list. Anyway, with us neurodivergence, the, the energy we lose of deciding that it's time to go to the store and going to the store and being in the store with the bright lights and probably the loud music and other people and then coming back home and having to put it away and um, then cooking it or getting back to work or whatever, the grocery delivery might be worth just deciding that that's just what you're going to do. Plan um, grab-and-go meals and shelf-stable snacks, um, snacks and have yourself keep yourself hydrated and have your bottle. Um, so let's see what we've got. Okay. Elizabeth Salmore uses plan to eat as well. That's what PTE is in, in their um, comment. And they do have a year-end sale. It's not year-end. It's over um, Black Friday in the U.S., the day after U.S. Thanksgiving, and usually that weekend, usually four to six days, and it is half sale. So it's um, $25 a year, half off, and then that's for the full year. Catherine Kirk says some other foods, almost anything, you can do everything but the cooking step and freeze that. Yes, that's true. <coughs> so then you just tip it out into the pan or the tray and cook it in the oven or on the stove, and it tastes fresh rather than feeling like leftovers. I used to do that, and I'd forgotten. That's a very good idea. Uh, John Stonelord says, I just go buy things by foot. That way I cannot buy more things ah, than you can carry. That's a good point. Um... Alexis says, I try to keep easy, stable snacks from multiple food groups on hand at all times. Protein like nuts, easy fruit or veg like grapefruit slices, easy carb crackers, etc. Yes, yes. Um, and this is still Alexis. Oh, as always, always have safe food on hand. Things for poor appetite, poor exercise, poor executive functioning days. Sometimes I can only manage ice cream. Mm-hmm. Been there. Uh, Elizabeth Granda goes shopping in the early morning, so it's empty. Uh-huh. Yeah, I used to go to a really good grocery store after the school run when I had to do a school run, and I miss having that part of my routine because now I have to figure out when I have the energy to go and when it won't be overcrowded. Um, and, yes, this is a good point, Elizabeth. My mom has cel – well, actually, I have a lot of family members with celiac um, – and doesn't trust the delivery. So you, if if you do have special needs where you don't trust them, and I don't blame you, um, then yeah, you need to think about when can I go that won't wear me out. And I will say something. I have Walmart bring it to my trunk every couple of weeks, but it's not real food. It's you know the snacks that I do trust, the snacks that they can't mess up. Um, and I'm sorry, Catherine Kirk, that this slide is making you hungry. <laughs> Okay, so Heather points out that what Catherine described is par baking, which means you bake it halfway through and then you let it cool and freeze. Huh. Okay. And I have missed, ah, 
I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Zivy or Zavy. I'm sorry um, that I probably got it wrong, has a tendency to forget to eat. And we all, okay, I can't, I cannot say all, but this is so not unusual um, to forget to eat. My older son, who um, went away to college, lives by his alarms, and he has alarms to remind himself to eat. That said, you actually have to do it when the alarm goes off. And I think living on campus where he couldn't get food after a certain time, he actually did go get it when he could still go get it. But yes, okay. So back to Xavier Zivy. Uh, something they have done is when they don't have the structure in their everyday life, oh, <laughs> is to make alarms. I didn't read the whole thing. That's so funny. That's exactly what my son does. Yes. Um, yes. And Marnie points out a lot of us don't hear our, our the clues our body is sending us. That it says you need to get up and eat or use the bathroom or whatever. That's a very neurodivergent kind of problem that, oh, suddenly we are super hungry. Alyssa got a, I don't know how this is pronounced, but I had been looking at this for my son as he moves into his first apartment, the Tovala oven and meal plan. And it is the best thing ever, according to Alyssa. They get six to eight meals a week, and each one comes with a barcode to scan. Oh, this is so good for the neurodivergent brain. <clears throat> Zero prep time. It's not cheap, but it's been a huge game changer for me. And that's where we get into, you know, the ADHD tax, where you pay more for some things, but hopefully you're, it's worth it that you know, if if your brain is working because you got yourself fed, because you subscribed to the Tovala, then you got your bills paid on time. And I have to say, for those of you who are younger, it's so much easier now. When we used to have to write the checks and mail the bills, the ADHD tax was a lot higher than it is now when you can set up auto pay. Okay. Okay. So it looks like we've got the food. Um, I did have in my prepared plan. Um, oh, yeah, I've got some ideas. And we've got time because we've got um, almost half an hour for presentation and Q&A. Um, so I'm going to be rude and read. Okay. So we talked about prepping the snacks ahead of time, and some people gave good examples. We did not talk about, if you can, put them in individual containers so you can grab them out um, easily. Um, for one serving or two servings. If you have the luxury of being able to put a small refrigerator in your workspace, you might do that. Um, if prepping and cooking are physically too demanding, think about things like a cutting station at the table or a rolling stool in your kitchen that might help you get it done. Um, we've talked about the shelf stable and easy to open snacks like protein bars. I don't, I, some of these came up and some did not. Protein bars, nuts, cheese, canned beans, especially if you buy the kind with the top, the pop top so you don't have to remember the can opener. But you do have to remember spoons, um, granola bars, dried fruit, chocolates. Let's not forget the sweets, chocolates, um, pop tarts, the savory, the sesame sticks. Um, yeah, we have more comments now as I'm talking. You, you all have started going. And then um, we've got the uh, be sure you stay hydrated as well. So more comments. Heather is saying there's a tiny bit of overlap with um, their panel tomorrow, and they'll be talking about food. You know what? So we can probably move on. Alexis points out if you qualify for food stamps or those of you not in the U.S., whatever you might be able to get in your country, uh, food stamps can help you afford easy food, which can help you work, which may help you be able to afford more on your own. And if not, that's okay, too. Yeah. Um, oh, Marnie looks, listens to audiobooks and podcasts as their secret weapon for cooking and cleaning up. That's, yes, love, love that. Um, Alyssa says, sitting down to prep feels less taxing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Or put Alexa on and, and have you clean up. You know, we talked about your music for when you're writing or editing. Have music for when you're cooking or cleaning up. Okay. So, uh, next slide. Structure your space. 
um, start your day with what you need. So as space allows, have what you need where you work. So we're back to writing and editing. So we're going to assume you've got a laptop or a desktop and you've got a corner in your house or the luxury of like a whole desk and a whole room or that you work on the couch. So if you need to get a box to hold everything to move it from the corner of the living room to the couch, do so. And think about those crates, um, the, the milk crates that are plastic with the holes in the side because um, – if you have your books in them and it's in a real box, you'll forget, your brain won't see that the books are there. And you can also, the, the plastic one, uh, you can pull the books out and it will be strong enough to set them on top and then you put them back when you're done and you move it back to the corner of the room at the end of your work session. Um, keeping your area stocked, I think we're done. Manage your room temperature. If your heating or cooling is not what you need and your system just, it's just not going to be. Uh, have sweaters or fans handy. Um, you know, so layer up if it's cold and unlayer and have a fan if it's hot. Um, and then think about anything you can do to rearrange your workspace and um, that, so that it works for you. You know, and so many of us have so many limitations. I mean, truly, I know some of us are sitting in a very small space or standing at the kitchen counter to do our writing or editing. Uh, so next, get dressed. Um, think about having a uniform. So this, I'm going to talk about decision fatigue for a minute. Decision fatigue is not on any of these slides. But a lot of these ideas are to help you avoid decision fatigue. So many, if not all, of the pros that I have worked with over the years have talked about decision fatigue. So basically, the more decisions you make in the day, the harder it is to keep making them. So if you can make things so automatic that it's not a daily decision, then that's one more decision you can use in your writing or editing or what you're going to have to eat. Um, so what we want you to do is think about what you can automate or put on autopilot. So when getting dressed, consider having a kind of uniform. Mine is long sleeve t-shirts and jeans in cold weather and short sleeve t-shirts and skorts in hot weather. Dana, who helped me with this presentation, favors popover caftans, sundresses, and house coats. And you might, and I'm not joking because I have friends who do this, have your sleeping pajamas and your working pajamas. <coughs> Whatever makes you comfortable, whatever is easy for you and acceptable for your life. Think about color-coded hangers. This might apply more if you have kids and for them than for you. Um, but if you know that the blue hangers are your conference and church or temple or fancy schmancy, I have to dress up things and other, hang you know, and the white hangers are what you can wear just in your daily life, then that's easier. Your brain just goes, you know, today I'm just working at home and I can go to the white hanger. Um, organize your drawers so you can see what's available. I have never Marie Kondoed my house, but when I saw how she folds clothes, I wondered why I had not been doing it that way all along. And basically, you can fold your clothes so that, for example, since I'm a t-shirt person, you can fold them so that you can see what the design of the t-shirt is, and they sit up. They, so, like, you're stacking your clothes left to right. And basically, my t-shirts are, are plain. My son's t-shirts have fun things on them. But I just basically grab from the left so you don't have the up and down stack where you're d digging from the middle. Um, wear the clothing you like. We kind of talked about that. Get rid of or totally put away uncomfortable clothing. You're not going to wear it or you don't want to wear it. And that leaves one room for more things that you do like and it's less for you have to, to take care of. Permit yourself to wash small loads. Um, a lot of us were taught for energy efficiency and water efficiency, only do laundry when it's a full load. But here's the thing, you might not have the energy. And if you do a small load and you always do this load on Monday and this load on Tuesday and this load on Wednesday, it becomes part of your rhythm of your life. And it's also easier to put away a smaller load because how many of us don't get things put all the way away? Ah, okay, so here we go. So comments. 
Um, yeah, so Alyssa talks about being at the exact right temperature and it's a narrow window. And Alyssa has daytime pajamas and nighttime pajamas. <laughs> and they're the same. Alyssa just changes into a different set than they went to bed in. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so John, you can tell us a little more. John says they get sleeping problems when they don't make enough thinking during the day. So I don't know if that's, you know, thinking about all the stuff that didn't happen or that did. Sonia talks about um, a speed wash to do smaller loads. My machine does not have that. When I replace it, I'm going to look for that. Ren talks about one day to wash and five business days to put clothes away. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all something. When my kids were babies and their crib, I mean, newborns and their cribs in my bedroom, I just had baskets under the, the crib and I would just toss their clothes in by, you know, the onesies go in this basket and the diapers go in, well, they had cloth there, but you know, whatever, uh, the t-shirts, whatever. And my mother-in-law was appalled because she's Dutch. And I was like, but no one cares. And I have to change their clothes about three times a day anyway, because they were babies and spit up happens. Do what's right for you. That's, you know, in my recorded version of this presentation, and I'm slower and calm and not interacting with fun people like you all, I do, I talk about more, throw out what's not working for you. Take the one idea that's new to try, analyze what hasn't worked, and figure out what you want to try to replace it or to work better for you. Okay, so John says they need to tire their brain out before going to bed, or it throws ransom intru random intrusive thoughts for hours. Oh, yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, we can go to the next slide. Break the rules. We've kind of talked about this before. We've implied it if we haven't said it specifically. The early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. So think about changing when you do activities, you know. If you're a night owl, own it. Change, you know, pretend you're in a different time zone. Work evenings and weekends if that's what works for you. Run a partially full dishwasher, which kind of gets back to the run a small load of wash instead of a thing. If you have the luxury of being able to afford it, a higher, I mean, the slide says a lawn service and a house cleaner, but what we really mean is hire someone to do the jobs you hate or that wear you out or both and think a little outside the box. You may be able to hire someone who will trim your bushes and do your edging, but you like mowing, so you want to do the actual mowing, or you might not have the energy to be able to do what I'll call the wet cleaning, the mopping and cleaning of the bathrooms, you can probably find someone who will do just that for you. Um, I personally, I like vacuuming. It's kind of meditative for me. But um, yeah, especially if you live near uh, an elementary school, you may find some stay-at-home parents who would like a few extra bucks a week to just come in and mop for you and clean your bathrooms. <clears throat> so again, that's thinking outside the box. Yeah. Um, Sonia has a good idea for if you're staying up too much at night with things, you know. Um, podcasts or movies that you watch a lot can kind of be a comforting thing. I actually do that too. Um, when I still had my Apple subscription, I listened to Ted Lasso. <laughs> Now I'm listening to uh, All Creatures Great and Small on my PBS app. But the the thing is, I've seen those episodes, and I have the um, accessibility, so it's describing the scene. And so my brain is lulled into this is something I enjoy. It's something that brings me joy and makes me relax, and I can fall asleep. Um, and I do. And also I have. I've re-listened to podcasts I enjoy. I've re-listened to audiobooks I've enjoyed. And... You know, you just put them on for hours and you fall asleep and then you wake up and they're still playing or they're not. Um, let's see. I'm reading the comments. Ah, you can rewash the Swiffer dusters in a delicate laundry bag and reuse them so much better than rags. Yeah, okay. Alexis talks about two types of load, darks and light, and not on the same day or even the same week. Yeah, so in the recorded version, I actually talk about, you know, if you want to do laundry once a month, if you want to own enough clothes to get through once a month, own it. Own it. 
say, I do laundry once a month. I go to the laundromat maybe and fill up all their washing machines and do all my clothes. I get them clean on one day and I put them away the next two or three days or if you have the energy, more power to you, and you just do it all, that's your day. Own it. What works for you? That's what we want you to do, is to find what works for you. Um, okay, so we'll move to the next slide. So these resources, again, the links are in the, the resource guide, and there's more. Um, yeah, so, and then um, we'll talk. Oh, we've got 15 minutes for exchanging ideas, y'all. Um, Dana and I both always offer copy edits of just 10,000 words for $250. It's really aimed at um, authors who have never been copy edited and are afraid, or authors who have a super duper tight budget who can take the changes we've made and the patterns that we recognize for, you don't know this comma rule and we describe it to you so that you can go on. And if you book now through July 31st, we'll give you a 10% discount. Just tell us you were at the Neurodivergent Publishing contest, uh, Conference, not contest, it's not a contest. Um, and this is our information, which I guess I should probably put in the, um, let's see if we can, nope, can't grab it because it's the thing. Okay, so we will stop sharing. Okay, um, and we will read some more of the comments. Um, yeah, Alyssa watches TV and movies while working, just the right thing. Okay, so and Alyssa says music is too distracting because they sing along. Um, and the sh I will say, I listen to classical music when I'm editing almost always. If I'm doing admin work or housework, I have, or taxes, I'll tell you what, I love Lady, Lady Gaga got me through taxes last year. Loved, loved it. Um, um, yeah, so Alyssa says classical music makes them too sleepy. But I've got my editing playlist, and it's a whole bunch of piano concertos and classical guitar. So that's what work, works for me. But I don't play it all the time. There are some days I just have my earbuds in and no music on, and I'm just editing. Um, Aaron listens to rain sounds or cafe sounds as long as the chatter isn't discernible. And you can get that, you know, on YouTube, you can get those sounds if you subscribe to Freedom, which is a, a software app that will block you from parts of the Internet. You tell it what you want it to keep you from and for how long, but as part of that, you can also have different sounds. Um, Catherine Kirk uses Ambi to generate background noise. Um, oh, and Catherine Kirk has a playlist on Spotify of about 9,000 songs that have no lyrics. That is one thing that um, YouTube has some lo-fi, deep thinking music, or I've read that the soundtracks for video games can be really good to work to because they have no words and they're kind of designed for deep thinking or to get you really into the task. I mean, they're designed to get the players into the game, but it could get, help you get into your writing or editing. Yeah, Heather does monotone concentration music on YouTube, and there's a lot of that out there. Um, movie scores. Carrie says movie scores. Marnie says, oh, here's the thing. Marnie, Marnie's asking Catherine Kirk if we can have access. We can't. You can share uh, playlists, and I've got some that other editors have shared with me that every now and then I listen to, but I've kind of got my thing. Um, short meditation apps for anxiety. You know what? That, yes. And I think I need to get that added to the resources guide, the meditation apps. Um, you all, if you all can drop some of these links in, well, I guess um, we can add some of these. I don't want to add too many things to the resources guide. I kind of sometimes wish that I had like a computer that I could work on that was not attached like to a different that's attached to a different account so I can um let cookies track me so it can show me more meditation things you know cuz you know when you look and it tracks you um okay okay so there are some things in the chat you all might want to grab 
that are some good ideas. Biurnal beats, that, yes, are good. Those are on YouTube. Short meditation apps. Near Automata for uh, soundtrack is really good. Study with me videos on YouTube. Not quite the same as body doubling, but good for Aaron. And it might be good for you. Um, Elizabeth has jazzradio.com. Yes, these are ones you all might want to be copying and pasting into your own browser. Classicalradio.com. A few other channels connected to them with different kinds of music. And if, yeah, okay. Oh, I didn't mean to start playing that. Hold on. Um, oh, Catherine Kirk has a link in the chat. An Asian mom who checks if you are working. It's hilarious. So, again, what works for you that will help you feel good about yourself at the end of the day? And I will say, if your day doesn't go as planned, be kind to yourself at the end of the day. We all have bad days, and sometimes we have a series of bad days. You need to give yourself grace. And that's the end of everything formal, but I'm happy to stay. We have eight more minutes before we're supposed to be done. Mm -hmm.